By now, many of you have already heard about the horrors of Project 2025. And this is not going to be a political video. I'm going to be focusing on the financial aspects of it, particularly the tax aspects of it. Republicans have done a lot of damage to the American tax code over the years by giving massive tax cuts to the rich and corporations. But if they win back the White House and get the chance to implement Project 2025, the damage will be supercharged to another level. Project 2025 will institute massive changes to the tax code. While this part of the Heritage-led manifesto is receiving far less media attention than others, it's no less alarming. And here are a few of the major tax changes that Project 2025 would usher in. And spoiler alert, if you make less than $100,000 a year, this project is not for you. The project would create two brackets with lower rates for ordinary income taxes. There are currently seven brackets for taxes on ordinary income with a top marginal rate of 37%. There already aren't enough brackets with the 37% rate covering all income over $731,000 a year. But Project 2025 would make a bad situation worse by reducing the number of brackets to just two with a 15% tax on taxable income below $168,000 and a 30% tax on taxable income above that level. According to estimates from Brendan Duke, the Senior Director of Economic Policy at the Center for American Progress, under this policy, a family of four with $100,000 in annual income would pay $2,600 in additional income tax while a family of the same size making $5 million a year would receive a $325,000 tax cut. Those who are wealthy and can afford to pay do not need a huge tax cut. They already make more than enough to live more than well. The plan would reduce the corporate tax rate to 18%. The 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act permanently reduce the corporate income tax rate from 35% to 21%, and in so doing, gave wealthy shareholders and executives a windfall. Project 2025 would further reduce this rate to 18% and give an even greater bonanza to the rich. There are dozens of corporations in the U.S. right now that have billions of dollars in taxable income, yet they pay not only 0%, they also get money back from the government, similar to the earned income tax credit that lower wage earners get. Since they are already paying 0%, why do they need a tax cut? The project would reduce the tax on capital gains and dividends to 15%. Currently, there are two brackets for capital gains and dividends, 15% and 20%. Project 2025 would do away with the 20% bracket entirely and tax capital gains and dividends at 15%. Taxing capital gains over $1 million at such a low rate is already an absurd giveaway to the wealthy that values wealth more than work. But considering how few Americans even own stock and considering the vast majority of the publicly traded stock in this country is concentrated in the hands of the wealthy, this is just another gift to the rich with no benefit to the average American. Income is income. It doesn't matter what source it comes from. You should not get preferential tax treatment for different types of income. Having a preferential rate, as we are seeing in this project, and as is written in the current tax law, simply favors the rich. The project would repeal all tax changes made by the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act. Democrats Inflation Reduction Act took important steps in making the wealthy and corporations pay their fair share in taxes. Among other things, it created a 15% corporate minimum tax and a 1% excise tax on stock buybacks. Project 2025 would do away with all of it. Having corporations pay a 15% minimum tax rate is still an insult to the rest of us. A corporation doesn't have to worry about putting food on the table, paying for housing, paying for college, or any other of the everyday expenses that everybody has to go through. 
since corporations are pulling in massive amounts of profit, and since the current maximum tax rate is 37%, that is what corporations should be paying as well. As for the excise tax on stock buybacks, stock buybacks used to be illegal until the early 1980s, but that all changed under Reagan. By allowing corporations to buy back their own stock, this means that there are fewer outstanding shares on the market, which boosts the price of the stock, which increases the capital gains of the wealthy, and of course they want to have a lower income tax rate on capital gains. You see how this is not working out for the average American? It's all skewered for the rich. The project would reduce the estate and gift tax to 20% and make permanent the TCJA's exemption amount increase. The top marginal rate on the estate and gift tax is currently 40%. The TCJA temporarily increased the threshold at which estate and gift taxes kick in. In the 2024 filing season, this threshold was $27.22 million for a married couple. As if letting that much wealth pass from generation to generation tax-free wasn't absurd enough, Project 2025 would reduce the top rate on estate and gift taxes to 20%, and also make permanent the TCJA's exemption threshold hike. I have a better idea than to have an estate or gift tax. Estate and gift taxes are just a way for the government to collect taxes on people who most likely, because of their wealth, have gone their whole lives cheating the system and paying as little as possible. A better solution is to make people pay their fair share as written in the tax code while they're still alive. The project would also freeze IRS funding and replace top officials with appointees. Project 2025 calls for the budget of the IRS to be held constant and in real terms, which essentially means that it would rescind the funding allocated to the agency by the Inflation Reduction Act. This money has already been used to recoup over $1 billion in unpaid taxes by the very wealthy and significantly improve taxpayer services. It would also replace many of the top positions at the IRS with presidential appointees, ensuring institutional policy and process knowledge would not be retained from administration to administration. For every $1 increase in the IRS budget, they collect $6 in unpaid taxes. That's an investment we can't afford to underfund. Too much tax money goes unpaid every year and it's time for it to stop. We hear all these complaints about deficits, but we don't hear complaints about those who are cheating the system and not paying the taxes that they actually owe. The rest of this article deals more on a political nature, which is not the scope of my channel. I'm just dealing on the financial aspects, but I will put a link for the entire article in the description below. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.